Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the Sapphire Tech YouTube channel. Today I've just got a really quick video showing a potential workaround for the stutter issue that is currently plaguing Star Wars Squadrons for a lot of users. Now before we get started I want to make it clear that this issue does not appear to be specific to certain hardware configurations. Basically at the time of recording Star Wars Squadrons appears to be having some major problems when it comes to running above 60 frames per second. While the game claims to be running smoothly at frame rates above 60, as is evident when looking at our performance overlay, the reality is that we're actually receiving far less than 60 unique frames per second, at least technically. You see, if we look closely at our recordings, it looks like the game is actually pumping out the reported frames, it's just the only elements that appear to be updating each frame are the post-process effects. This is causing the game to both look and feel incredibly laggy, and to make matters worse, since the game is actually sending out duplicated frames, technologies such as AMD FreeSync and Nvidia G-Sync are not going to be able to smooth out the experience. In fact, the only reliable workaround that I've found so far is to run the game at a locked 60Hz V-Sync, as this will all but eliminate the duplicated frames, greatly improving on both the game's responsiveness and smoothness. To do this, you're going to want to set the game's refresh rate to 60Hz and enable VSync in the options menu. You're also going to want to make sure that you disable either AMD Enhanced Sync or Nvidia Fast Sync via your graphics card's drivers if you normally have them enabled, as these features override the in-game VSync setting. If you're running either AMD FreeSync or Nvidia G-Sync on a monitor that exceeds 60Hz, you're going to want to disable the feature while playing Star Wars Squadrons, or at least limit your FPS to a stable 60 using an external frame rate limiter, such as Rivertuna Statistics Server. I personally recommend Rivertuna as it offers very stable frame times which should in theory greatly limit the risk of duplicated frames when locked to 60fps. Unfortunately, I've not had the chance to check out the game running in VR, however, based on information from multiple sources, it appears that the VR devices themselves are also suffering the same fate as everybody else. For that reason, I have to say that if you are hoping to play this game in VR, I'd highly recommend that you wait until the developers release a patch addressing this issue, especially if you're even the slightest bit prone to the dreaded VR motion sickness. On a slightly more positive note, since this game does have a big focus on VR, I'm actually fairly confident that we should see these issues ironed out in a relatively short period of time. Low frame rates, input latency and judder slash stutter are obviously bad, but in VR they are so much worse, as they massively increase the risk of VR sickness and headaches. Now, providing that you're playing on a 60Hz monitor with vSync enabled, you really shouldn't have any problems. Once the 60Hz VSync is active, the game does in fact run very smoothly, and its performance profile means that you shouldn't really have any issues maintaining that solid 60fps lock on hardware suited to your chosen resolution. If you're running the game on a high refresh rate monitor and you are struggling to get the game locked to 60fps, this could be because you are running the game using borderless window mode. Borderless window mode forces the game to run at your current desktop resolution and refresh rate. If for whatever reason you have to play using borderless window mode, you're going to have to set your desktop refresh rate to 60Hz in order to get the game running with a 60Hz vSync. You can do this by simply right clicking on the desktop and then clicking display settings. This should pop up a window containing a number of display related options. You're going to want to scroll down to where it says advanced display settings and then click the text. This will show you some information about your current display such as the resolution and refresh rate. Find where it says display adapter properties for your primary monitor and click it. This should pop up a properties window and on the adapter tab you should see a button called list all modes. Click that and then select your desired resolution and refresh rate from that list. Since I'm looking to play the game at 1440p I'm going to select 2560 by 1440, 32 bit and 60Hz. Once it's highlighted, click OK and then on the properties window click apply and the screen should do a quick flicker and your chosen refresh rate and resolution should now be applied. Just remember that once you've stopped playing, you're going to want to bump your refresh rate back up again by following these steps, but this time selecting your higher refresh rate. Hopefully, by following these steps you should be able to get the game running smoothly. Obviously, it's never a great feeling to have to perform workarounds for problems that really shouldn't exist, but this should at least make the game playable until the devs get a patch out fixing this issue properly. If this video has helped you out, then how about returning the favour by leaving us a like? Also, if you are new around here, slap that subscribe button and ding that bell so you get notified of our future uploads. Please also feel free to leave us a comment if you've got any questions, suggestions or feedback, but for now, 
this is going to be me done for today. So from myself and everybody here at the Sapphire Tech YouTube channel, thank you so much for stopping by. And until next time, we'll catch you later. Bye bye.